Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. Um, this week I'm absolutely all over the place. I'm in London, Paris, and Moscow. So, um, see if you see me in any of those places. Uh, so I am uh, going to continue on. This is hopefully going to be our last session on the um, working in a 3D space. And I'd like to talk about now rendering out um, the 3D objects that you're working with. So let me just get started here in Harmony and show you what my scene looks like. So we arranged this scene um, last week. It's kind of a basic bare bones scene, but I've got my background layer in there. I've got my car layer with a little bit of animation on it, and then I've got a drawing layer scribble. Um, so if I go and look in my um, network view here, the network view shows um, you know, what's going on with the different modules. So I've got my 2D drawing layers over here. Um, if you are importing in 3D models, then it will show you the type of 3D model that's imported on that layer. So in this case, I have an OSB layer here, and I have an FBX layer here. And, um, you know, when you're working with OSBs, you can import multiple OSBs onto the same layer. Um, so, for example, as you're working, if you're working with a proxy model at the beginning, and then you keep updating your model as you go, you can always go back onto the same layer. Uh, like onto the loft layer or the car layer and you can file import 3D models and you can import another version of this model um, onto the same layer and then you could swap it out just like you would swap a drawing on a character um, and this is useful for being able to update models as you go you can't mix and match the OSB and the FBX file so you have one layer that has the OSB and another layer that has the FBX if you, if you have both um, file types but otherwise, it's a really handy way of being able to do that. But at this point, what's happening is it's loading in this OSB or the FBX. And at this point, it's just keeping it as a model. And you have an OpenGL preview. And once you hit the composite, that OpenGL preview gets flattened down to um, an image. Um, but at no point are you actually rendering out the final uh, image. So to render out the final image, this is where we go, uh, not into the message log, but into the module library. And in the module library, you've got a tab called 3D. And in here, you've got your render my batch server and render my batch. With render my batch, it opens up Maya, um, renders the image, and then closes Maya again. With render my batch server, it opens up Maya and then keeps Maya open as long as your session of harmony is open. And then it renders things as they go. So it's often better to use the render my batch server. Um, there's different configurations that it works with and that it doesn't. So if you're on Windows, you might have to use render my batch without the server option. Um, it just depends on your configuration. And for, for those configuration things of getting the environment variable set up and all that other good stuff, I'm going to recommend that you contact support to have them get you helped, uh, help set up. And also watch the video tutorials on the website uh, for the 3D side to help with the configuration. And always remember you've got your user guide in the help section. If you go to help and then help again, then there's a user guide that should have some steps on how to install. Because what you have to do is you have to set up an environment variable on your machine. What that environment variable does is it allows a handshake between Harmony and Maya. So, um, for example, it just re it reserves a port on your machine for Maya and um, so that when it tries to open Maya it can run Maya from the command line and that's how this whole thing works so I add my render Maya batch server in here and then when I add that module in it will read my object and then it will here it will open up Maya batch in the background it will look in the same directory as my object for a Maya binary file with the same name as this object here and it will render that out. So in other words, what you need to do is first save your scene so that you have a scene file to work with and so if you go into your folder where you save this guy, so I think it's just in 3D test here, inside the elements directory is where all of the assets are kept. So if you go in elements, here you'll see the elements that we're working with. So um, here I've got my car with ramp OSB. 
which is the one that I've disabled over here. And that's not the one I want to use, so I can just exit out of there. And car.4 is the FBX car. So in here, what I'd like to do, I'll just open up a new Finder window, or a new Windows Explorer if you're on Windows, is I copy in the original Maya binary file. So if I go to where I saved that, which was in Documents, and I have one project in here called The Key, and 3D, and then I've got it saved in here, my final models. So in here now, this is where I can find the final file. In the case of the car, there's no textures associated with the car. It's just a minor, Maya binary file. So I can copy this, um, and then I can paste it over here. Control or Command F and Command or Command C and Command V. Or control C, Control V. And once I get that pasted into this directory, you have to also um, rename this so that it's exactly the same name as the file that it's looking for here. So because I have no textures, all I have to do is import the my binary file and I'm good to go. When I go with the other one with the loft, the loft, if I take a look at the loft in, a, in this example, it has many textures. So I want to go ahead and um, copy all of those textures and the my binary file into this folder. So then I can copy that there and then I can paste this in here. And now that I've got all of those textures and the Maya binary file, I need to rename the Maya binary file. And I should be good to go here. So if everything's in the right spot, then all I need to do is go back to Harmony and save, and then I'll relaunch it. So I will quit out of stage for a second here. You have to relaunch it because it's when you load the scene that it looks to see whether it can find the Maya files in the scene file and it doesn't keep checking after you load the scene. So if you do make changes to the directory, you have to reload the project. You have to quit and restart the project. So now that I've got that done, it's all happily reloaded here. I've got the Maya batch render node going in here, and I set up my environment variable already according to the directions for the type of operating system that I'm running then I should be able to hit the render button. And when I hit render, what it's doing is it's actually opening up Maya in the background and it's um, opening up each one of these source files. So it's looking at the OSB, but it's looking for the Maya Barony file that matches the same name as the OSB. And it's opening up that file and rendering it out. Now, when it renders out the Maya file, it will use all of the shaders and the textures and the lighting from the Maya file itself. So you're not actually controlling any of that within Toon Boom, which is a strength because you can really take advantage of the full um, capabilities of your 3D software. Uh, but it also does mean that you do need to set up the lighting and everything in the Maya file as well. So now that it's actually done that, um, if we look inside here and we zoom in, you can see it done it with the final textures. So the final textures are loaded in. And in the case of the car, it's rendered the car with my ramp shader. So now if I zoom back out to a normal zoom level, it's also composited together my 2D drawing with the 3D models. So everything is together and it's all in the right spot. Um, so even if you have animation on the camera, and animation on the 3D model. Even if you have pegs that are parents of other pegs and you can have pegs that rig together 3D model systems, then it calculates out all of those transformations, applies that in your 3D model, and renders it from the correct location. So that wraps up our discussion of um, working in a 3D space and importing 3D models in. I know this is a complex topic with a lot of different subtleties to it, so I may return on another episode of the Tip of the Week later on and um, address some of those other subtleties. Um, and I may play around with the idea of doing uh, a demonstration with a different set software other than Maya. But for now, at least this gives you a taste of what it's like to work with a 3D environment. And so just to finish up here by 
showing you an example of what a full 3D environment can look like, I'll just open up an example that I've done already so that you can see using the same models I did today but um, something that actually is put together in a real 3D space and, and has all the animation on it. So let's say, I think 18 is going to be a good scene to look at. And this is a project that we're doing at Toon Boom to kind of show off the technology a little bit, so it's a work in progress. But um, if you see what, what happens in here, I've got already um, some animation on a 2D layer in here. And if we look in the perspective view, we'll just make that big for a second here. If we look in the perspective view, the, the 2D character is attached directly to the camera, so he doesn't really make sense in the space. But um, there's two different ways of doing it. You can attach the 2D character to the camera, or you can place the 2D character in the scene where he belongs. And so if I just bring back up my timeline here, and I'll play through this, or I'll drag through this scene. Sorry, it's got some sound on it, so I'll turn the sound off. So if I play through this scene, there's an animation on the loft. I did the animation on the 3D model in this case instead of doing it on the character or on the uh, camera, but you can do it either way. Uh, but the advantage of doing it on the loft was that I could attach this um, character layer to that. So there's two character layers in this scene. There's the there's the old man here, and the old man is using the method where he's actually placed where he belongs in the 3D set, and then he's got an ortho lock node on him to keep his uh, keep him facing the camera. And then the young man, who we saw at the beginning, who's really tiny over there, um, is attached directly to the camera. So as the camera moves, he is always facing the camera. So now if we look at it from the camera view, what we see in the camera view is we see the young man here jumping down. And as the camera or the loft rotates around, he's attached to the camera, so he stays with the camera. But the old man, who's placed in the set comes in with the set as the animation on the set comes in. So in the end you have the flexibility of doing a number of different things. And if we look in the end on what we have in here, we've got uh, the old man who's placed in space with the with a 3D peg. He's placed in space. And we have him attached to an ortho lock to keep his feet uh, planted or to keep him um, always facing the camera. And then we have the young man layer over here who is attached to the camera peg. So when you attach a character directly to the camera peg, then that character is stuck to the camera. As the camera rotates, the character is always stuck to the camera. So those are both good methods to use. And in this case, I use both the methods in the same scene file, um, which works out really well. So hopefully that gives you guys a good taste of what can be done. And um, I'd be more than happy to return to this topic at a later date for more of the subtleties. And good luck and happy animating.